Buenos dias, my sweet baby angels. You are listening to another episode of Tutia Bruja. I'm Bex Carlos, your host. I am going to make this one kind of quick. If you are going to be moving or switching your home environment, something I didn't think about just because I've been lucky, like I've had bad, you know, living situations where there were definitely spirits there because my cat just kept like meowing at them. And like, sometimes I would just get really uncomfortable, but I don't have the gift strong enough to just like know when spirits and like the story of who died there. But I have friends who do. Uh, I went to go look at this space that I was thinking about going to go live in. And I just knew that something was off. And I have to admit the night before I'd driven by with my parents because they were curious about it. And my mom had said, and you guys remember A while back ago, I had my mom on the show and she definitely has like a gift. She had just gotten really quiet and just got upset and was just like, I mataban y enteraban, which means there they, you know, they were murdering and burying people and just, you know, I thought she was being facetious and I didn't know what to really think of it, you know? So then I went into the house and I just felt like there was something off. There was something off about the property. Um, You went into the basement and even though it wasn't finished, there are all these little rooms that just hung off of the main basement area and it was kind of windy and the way that the closet would be set up is like you looked at little shelving units but then there was a little walkway where you walk down and then you would walk around and there was like another little storage area like it was almost away from everyone. I don't know. Something about that space just really, really like made my stomach feel uncomfortable. And I was there with someone else who spoke Spanish, my dad. And like, I just said to him, Como que aquí si mataban y enteraban gente. And he just said, it's Como que si. Because there was an industrial sink installed in the basement. And if that's not like kind of weird enough, there was also like, an industrial paper towel holder, which is weird to me just because like, you know, I feel like if you know you're going to be going through that many paper towels and you would install an industrial paper towel holder, that just seems really weird. That just seems really weird. And uh, I don't know, the well in the backyard, it, it definitely, you know, that made me uncomfortable as well. And I get it. Some old properties have wells, but like, I don't know, just everything about it just seems really off. So if you're going to be moving, buying a property or something like that, be sure and take a medium with you. I feel like maybe realtors should also be mediums because I feel like that would be really smart. So also if you're a medium who's looking for something, maybe that's something to look into because it should be a two for one, I feel, because someone should be able to guess. The people showing the property definitely didn't feel any weird vibes there and I was just like ooh, yikes something else in addition to that I pretty irregularly am disappointed with the way that society you know thinks in regards to how vagina owners have to like live their lives (laughs) <laughs> like, uh, it's it's weird things that are just like basic medical treatments just to ensure proper quality of life are deemed like radical and unnecessary and I'd really like for society to cut that shit out like one person who made me just really impressed is Quentin Quarantino leftist meme lord scum supreme <laughs> he definitely uh raised over 1.2 million for planned parenthood so see sometimes a man can do it right jk but also kind of serious he raised that money in like really the span of like over a weekend i think it got to a million and that was really cool and everything obviously over that was also really amazing but that traction it had when rush limbaugh first died i just could not believe it but i mean i too have a personal vendetta with had a personal vendetta he's dead now i had a personal vendetta with rush limbaugh he just was not aware of it so i went to school in cape Girardeau, and that's what gave me my start in broadcasting and media and has led to this podcast being here today but that you know was where i had my first job um the company that gave me my start uh gave him his start but he'd actually been fired from there 
so yeah, I uh, I had a personal vendetta with a man. One day I'll tell you the story about how like, uh, you know, one of his crazy fans broke in. It's really not that exciting, but it's still weird. Yeah, so... I just hated being associated from Cape where he got his start. Mind you, that was like where he grew up and whatnot, but I just hated it. And uh, he just, you know, took conservative racism talk to the max and really just anything that wasn't just like white Anglo-Saxon white folk shit was just deemed like worth making fun of and just he pissed off enough people that they all raised myself included i i did throw down on that they raised money for planned parenthood and i just i that makes me so happy because i've used planned parenthood you know i know a lot of people in addition to myself have used planned parenthood and they do have services for penis carriers too like if you know you don't want kids they do offer vasectomies so keep that in mind and i just it's it's just so incredible how some evil man's death was able to raise so much good so that was something that really really was amazing to see on the internet you know what i mean in addition to that is so we had metzgly alexandria Cantor a while back on the show and they are amazing. I really highly suggest that if you have not invested in the Sacred Relatives Tarot deck, I, I please do. It's such a gorgeous deck. It's based on animal spirits and plant spirits. And you know, I think that it's important to say in a world that has had, you know, the effects of colonialism happen, that is not something that happens to plants and animals. I mean, like, unless they directly have the effects of it happen to them, that doesn't, like, travel through the family line. You know what I mean? You may notice that by the fact that, like, if you have a pet that you really, really connect to, their energy is so healing, you know, because they, they don't carry that that energy. So, you know, you you can just, like, hug your dog or hug your cat or just, like, you know, snuggle them and... They just give you this energy, this healing energy, and it's just so beautiful and calming. And the same with plants. If you're not a you know person who really connects with pets in that way, plants. Plants are also very healing. Like when you're out under a tree, like it recharges you in a way that you just don't even understand. So I interviewed them for Melissa Souza's blog, Flood Witch. So if you want to hear a little bit more about what went into the deck, the link for that will be in the show notes. So look for that. I don't believe it's out yet, but as soon as it is um, to reference this show, I will put it in. But I will include for sure the Kickstarter link because they are raising funds for it until March 23rd. So there's still time. Please, please support the deck. And even if you don't have the funds right now, please share it. Honestly, you never know who in your inner circle is looking to get into witchy shit and is just looking for the right sign. And you could be that sign and it would help fund a Black, Indigenous, Disabled, Two-Spirit creator. And I think in the name of just like making the world a little bit better, we should all help make this a reality. Thank you again for listening to the show. One last thing I want to just touch on before we leave is that, well, yes, two things, sorry. Okay, so two things I want to touch on before uh, I let you go is first, thank you so much to everyone around the world who has listened to this podcast. I thought that my broadcasting career was over when I was let go from my radio job circa 2016. And if I would have told myself back then that one day I would have a really successful podcast about witches, I just think that like you could have knocked me over with a feather. I just wouldn't have believed it. And I'm so thankful to make this a reality. And I'm so thankful that every episode, um, people have told me that they've connected in some way. So thank you if there's just been something that really has been an aha moment or, you know, has, has clicked in a way that maybe has helped you think about something differently or, you know, search for something that has been a very useful tool in your practice. I really, really am glad that I've been a resource for you. I just can't believe that people in 10 different countries have willingly 
listened to the show and we're growing all the time. Thank you. I'm just so grateful. And season four, I'm not really sure. Well, I am sure when it's going to start. So it's going to start April 20th. So season three is just kind of going to be whatever we can fit in before we start season four. That may be, you know, five more episodes. It might be three more episodes. I'm not sure. And I'm sorry. And I wish I could give you a more definitive number, but that's not how I roll. I'm kind of a chaos witch. So if you vibe with that, this is how we do things. Season four is going to be about the cannabis industry. And I'm really excited about that because cannabis is a tool that I use. I am most definitely a cannabis bruja. And I really just being able to have cannabis be the cherry on top to like if for example if i'm doing something for self-love i have flowers i have roses that i've dried and sometimes i'll make like a little bit of a mixture with a little bit of chamomile and some rose petals that i've just kind of like taken to my mortal and pestle and just kind of like smash up a little bit and then in addition to the cannabis like it just gives a really sweet loving to be able to connect that with the intention of like, today we're focusing and we're going to love ourselves, uh, you know, really makes it complete because then I can go do the bath that I was going to do, you know, and if I had a particular oil that I made to like rub on my skin and just like, you know, what have you, it all just like flows together better. I am really looking forward to a whole season about talking about cannabis magic. In addition to talking to a bunch of different individuals that make up the 19% that are people of color in the industry. I mean, I think it's no surprise that it's primarily white owned, but 19% is like across the board. So we're talking like black individuals. We're talking like Latinx. We're talking indigenous. We're talking Asian individuals, like all any type of person of color, they make up that 19%. And that's just extremely low. Um, We're going to talk to people, we're going to see what got them into the industry. We're going to talk about the first time that we got high. You know what I mean? Like, it's just going to be such an amazing season. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. If you know a company that is POC owned, please send them my way. I would love to connect. I would love to help share their story and and highlight their business. I have some really exciting news that I can't totally talk about until it's 100% confirmed. But if it works out my way, I'm going to be suggesting different recipes to try. Um, You know, like if for example, like you don't like smoking it, that's fine. I understand. But maybe you want to use it as a topical or maybe you want to use it as an edible or or whatever, we're going to maybe find a way that you feel comfortable if you do want to like try it out. Um, And I think topicals are a great way if you don't necessarily want the, you know, psychological effects that you can get sometimes um, with smoking cannabis, because it can be kind of scary or triggering for people. So it's all about comfort, right? It's all about figuring out how you can get this tool to work for you. And if, you know, cannabis is something you don't take part in and you just have no interest, that's totally fine too. Do whatever feels right. If staying sober is something that you're trying to achieve in your life, by all means, do not use this as a way to be surrounded by things or topics that you don't want to be. Totally understandable. But Either way, I look forward to season four and all of the different adventures and people and conversations it will bring. Thank you for listening. Follow the podcast at Tutia Bruja and also follow me at Bexby Casting. And you can be sure and check out my website because if you want to get involved in the show or you have a suggestion or anything like that, all the information to get in touch with me is on there. So that is www.bexbycasting.com. Thank you for listening. I really love this time together. Bye. Mm-hmm.